Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask Pastor James. This question comes from Victor in Brazil. And Victor asks, how can I say I'm God's child and can't hear him? I pray, study his word, and even evangelize. But I have been eager to hear him talk to me as a father would do to a son. What do I do? Well, Victor, that's a very good question. And that question deserves a very good answer. And I'll start by reading this scripture. It's John 10, chapter 10, verse 27, which says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Today is a really good day to wonder about that, because, and and I'll share some of my experiences with you later on in this in this answer. But for now, hearing God's voice is the desire of many, but few seem to feel that it's their personal experience. Why is God's voice so difficult to hear? Or is it? It's not really. If you understand that God's voice is a, is a small voice, it's a it's a a still small voice when you go and you do something wrong and you hear that voice saying you you need to repent of this or you need to stop doing this or you need to go here and evangelize or you need to read this scripture that's his voice talking to you it's not audible some people hear him audibly but not everybody hears him audibly most of his voice comes through the word. When we read the word, and I've and I've done it a million times, I'll ask God a question, and then I ask Him to lead me in the word and show me the answer in the word. And I'll just open the Bible, and there's the answer as I start reading. The answer to the question, and then sometimes He'll use a still small voice. Sometimes he'll use visions. Sometimes he'll use dreams. See, with me, he uses visions. So I'll have an open vision just walking down the road. But he, but he, use, he, he uses dreams to speak to my wife. And my wife will share her dreams with me. And God will use me to interpret the dream for her. Sometimes the dream's for me. And sometimes God will use others to speak to you. But make no mistake about it, brother. You're God's child. If you believe in him and you, and you have a repentant heart, you're God's child. So don't doubt whether or not you're God's child. Because you are. There are some verses in 1st Kings chapter 19 I encourage you to read the entire chapter to get a feel of the context but here here are some of the scriptures that I would like for you to read and I'll read some of it here 1st Kings chapter 19 verses 11 and 12 and he said go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break into pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. These verses, of course, are the experience of Elijah, a prophet of the Lord. I'm sure you've read about Elijah. After 
after the tremendous display of natural force, the natural force of God, he spoke very quietly to Elijah. The verses indicate that perhaps Elijah was looking for a message from God in the wind or the earthquake or the fire, but the message came as a still small voice to Elijah. And that's how most of us hear it. That's how most of us understand God speaking to us. And as I read in the scripture before, in John 10, chapter 10, verse 27, you do hear his voice. It's just not audibly. It's, it's in your spirit. You hear him because he's a spirit. He's a spirit talking to your spirit. Make no mistake about it. God does not speak to the flesh because the flesh is evil. The flesh is filthy. The flesh is sinful. Your flesh is not saved. Your spirit is saved. So I hope that answers your question. And I want to also uh, discuss something the Lord told me. I was asking him, I was like, Lord, why is it getting harder to hear your voice? And it took him a few days to answer. But he finally answered me and he said, James, I speak. I speak like I always have. And I'm there just as strong as I always was. However, evil has encompassed and enveloped the earth. Evil is thick. The darkness is thick and it's harder to hear his voice through all the darkness. So what I do, and, and, and also sometimes it takes him a couple of days to answer you because you're not ready to hear the answer at the moment. Somebody very close to me passed away here recently and I wanted to know if he was truly saved. I wanted to know where he went. And I asked the Lord to tell me where he is. Where did he go? You know, and the Lord, it took the Lord three days, three days to answer that question. And on the day of the funeral, I was standing over the coffin. And finally, the Lord spoke to me and he said he made it. Now, I know those words because he used those words when he was talking about my grandmother. She made it. He uses words that are common to you. He uses words that you know, and he'll keep using those words because you know what they mean. And he'll use your language to speak to you, whatever language you understand the most. But pay attention to your dreams dreams that are vivid, dreams that highlight certain aspects of the dream. If it's a sinful dream, then disregard it because God don't send you sinful dreams. That's the devil trying to mess with you. But just keep your spiritual ears open, brother, because God is speaking to you. You just, you, you just don't know what to hear, listen for. But it's okay. We all have to learn how to hear that still small voice. Like it says in 1 Kings chapter 19, 11 and 12, God's voice wasn't where Elijah was expecting it to be. It was in a still small voice. Because think about it this way. God is, God is huge. God's voice is loud. As it says in Revelations, God's voice booms and echoes and thunders, like thundering and lighting. So he can't use his voice inside your head because he'll probably blow your head up. So he has to use the still small voice. So just keep in mind that that's how he communicates. And as far as open visions, you have to learn how to see visions as you're going about your everyday life. 
so that you don't trip and fall as you're walking down the road and you have a, you know, if you have an open vision and you're walking down the road, you have to learn how to accept the vision and still keep doing what you're doing and understand the vision. He had to teach me that. See, just pray and ask the Lord to discern his voice for you, to block out all other voices, even your own, so that you only hear his voice. Victor, I thank you for asking that question. This question really made us think, and it really helped us in, in a Bible study. You might as well call this a, a small Bible study, but it's all right. We all have to learn somewhere at some point in time. I thank you, I thank you, Victor, for your question, and anybody else listening to this question. And I pray that you all have a blessed, blessed day. <laughs> One more time.